country that can stop George Wallace and those posses. We can present thousands and thousands of bodies in the streets if we want to. And we can have all of the soul force and the moral commitment around this world. But a lot of these problems will not be solved until that shaggedly over place called the White House begins to shake and gets on the phone and says, now listen, George, we're coming down there and throw you in jail if you don't stop that mess. That's the only way it's going to be stopped. It's not just the sheriff of this county or the mayor or the police commissioner or George Wallace. This problem goes to the very bottom of the United States. And you know, I said it today and I will say it again. If we can't sit at the table, let's knock the legs off. Excuse me. Gloria Richardson, also known as Glorious Gloria. Gloria was born May 6, 1922 in Baltimore, Maryland. Gloria's grandfather was the first black city councilman in Cambridge, Maryland. He served from 1912 to 1946. Gloria always spoke out on the injustices and racial discrimination. Gloria graduated from Howard University in 1942. The Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, which they called SNCC, the SNCC, began its focus on segregated movie theaters, bowling alleys, and restaurants. Although Gloria was part of the SNCC, she did not agree with the nonviolent rules. Gloria was never the turn of the cheek type. In 1962, she joined the CNAC, the Cambridge Nonviolent Action Committee. In June of 63, black demonstrators were attacked for conducting the sit-in, and the general of the National Guard announced that there would be some changes. He announced that they're changing the rules of martial law. 9 p.m. curfew and all stores were to be closed at 2. Firearms were banned and searches by the police and the National Guard were authorized. Around 8.30 p.m. of that night, about 250 African Americans staged the Freedom Walk all the way to Dorchester County Courthouse. They were attacked and pelted with eggs. The state police had to use tear gas to disperse the mob. In 1963, Gloria attended a meeting in Atlanta about the future of the SNCC. As I stated, Gloria always wanted to change the rules of the nonviolent ideology. I mean, look at this picture. This is one of the most powerful pictures of all time. One of the most iconic photos ever. This is fearless right here. This has to be the greatest meme mug you've ever seen in your life. They say a picture says a thousand words. In this meeting in Atlanta, some of the most powerful leaders of that era were present. Stokely Carmichael, Ella Baker, John Lewis, Bob Moses. In a sit-in in 1963, JFK called Gloria and for the locals to stop immediately. Gloria's response was, the president can go to hell. Gloria is one of our greatest leaders of all time and another one of our forgotten heroes. 
fearless. And she stands today at 97 years strong. Let's show some love to this queen. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you thumbs up, and make sure you hit the notification bell. In the microwave because, um, one, we weren't the MLK model as we developed, and we were not doing once a year of speeches. It was a daily kind of thing for almost a year and a half. We were just showing a picture of you, a famous picture of you uh, pushing the um, it right next to the bayonet of uh, the national. Oh yes, no, they were trying to. He was going to stab me, so I had to push it. But anyhow, and they came because we you we weren't supposed to be demonstrating. We were out there to demonstrate. And we had been at a little shoe shine shop with General Gelston with him trying to stop, tell us no. And we're trying to say, yes, we're going to do it, when a whole lot of, I, we thought they were bullets. I don't know what he thought. He may have known what it was, but it happened to be tear gas. But when we, I rushed out and all the people were in the street, and then this guy was started coming toward me, and I thought, he's got to be crazy. <laughs> and and I, don't, I don't even know why. Pushed the gun, but I know I was furious at that time. But so back in the microwave, because um, one, we weren't the MLK model as we developed, and we were not doing once a year of speeches. It was a daily kind of thing for almost a year and a half. We were just showing a picture of you, a famous picture of you uh, pushing the um, it right next to the bayonet of uh, the national. Oh, yes. No, they were trying to, he was going to stab me, so I had to push it. But anyhow, and they came because we, we weren't supposed to be demonstrating. We were out there to demonstrate. And we had been at a little shoe shine shop with General Gelston with him trying to stop, tell us no. And we're trying to say, yes, we're going to do it, when a whole lot of, I, we thought they were bullets. I don't know what he thought. He may have known what it was, but it happened to be tear gas. But when we, I rushed out and all the people were in the street, and then this guy was started coming toward me, and I thought, he's got to be crazy. <laughs> and and I, don't, I don't even know why pushed the gun, but I know I was furious at that time. But so back. <laughs>